Hey guys, what's going on? Swiss, and we're here again with another matchup video. It's going to be a competitive guide for Snake versus the Belmonts. We're going to go through as much as we can. If there's anything you want to add that I didn't mention in the video or may have forgotten or passed by, please leave it in the comment section down below. We now have a Snake lab team on, on my end for myself. So we have been compiling data and actually uh, going over things that are going to work against Belmont and we're going to be doing that for future matchups as well. So I uh, really hope that the content that we put out will be a lot better than what was before. So enjoy the video, subscribe if you can, and let's go from there. So the first thing we want to go over is, you know, what does what is the issue with the Belmonts, right? And the biggest thing is their projectiles and their range in general. So if you're more of a rushing snake, then you might have an issue fighting these types of characters. The reason of that is because they have their forward air that they can angle, and they can and they can angle the forward air, the back air, you know, and their up air can hurt us if we actually are edge um, getting back on stage with a high recovery. When you actually land the tip of the whip, it actually has more damage than knockback. So that is something you want to be careful for. So watch out when when you're getting hit by those by the whip. That that when it comes to the tipper, that's going to be a big thing for them as far as knocking you back and getting the kill as well. Then we have the F tilt. So that's that's another thing too. So. One thing to make sure is that we understand how the Belmonts work. So he has a cross, which does kind of go pretty f far on the screen. It fills almost the whole screen there. Some Belmonts will just throw it forward. They'll just come back. They'll throw forward like that in the air, or they can throw actually, some people will throw it backwards because it'll kind of mess up your timing and that, that can kind of be an issue there. So be prepared for that. They can do that, and it'll just come back and hit you, just like as it did with Sheik. Another thing he has is the axe. The axe he can angle far, he can do a short, or he can do a medium. It does have a high amount of knockback, so you definitely don't want to get hit with these. It also does an extreme amount of shield damage, so if you are shielding, you want to be careful, or roll out the way, or something like that as well. So you really, really want to be careful about that. It also can actually destroy your Cypher if you're recovering low, so you definitely want to be careful of that if you're going to recover low with against Belmont. And then the other thing is the Holy Water. Um, when it comes to the Holy Water, it can be you're primarily going to see it as an edge guard. Uh, so when you are going to be coming back on stage, you actually most Belmonts are going to put the water here and then they're going to have a F smash waiting for you and that can lead into an early kill. So you definitely want to be careful about that. There's really no difference between the Belmonts. The only difference is Richter's holy water, which is his down B, is blue and Simon's is red. Simon's apparently is actually uh, is actually um, has a flame property while while um, Richter's doesn't really have a flame property, but that doesn't really matter to us because, you know, it has nothing to do do with us for Snake. That's just gonna be in regards of other things like Pikmin and Olimar and stuff like that. So, and say, so now that we know how the Richter's work, what their main thing is, they're gonna be keeping us out with aerials, short hop aerials to keep us out because of their range. They also, at the same time, are going to be using the cross. They might use the axe as well. And then you got the, the holy water for edge guarding. Not only that, but they could also do aerial. They'll do aerial all stage. You won't see them go too far off because they can't really do much because they're because of their recovery. So they do have to kind of be aware of that. But that is one thing to, to understand as well. So let's go ahead and go over like what we could do as far as um, with Snake. So one thing to mention when it comes to the Snake versus Belmont matchup is that Snake can actually crouch under 
some of his some of the Belmont's moves, such as F tilt. And he can't really um you can't angle Belmont cannot angle his F tilt, so he can't actually hit you with that. So he can't hit he can looks like he can get you with the forward smash, so you wanna remember that that he can that he can actually get the forward smash. So let's say so forward air is going to be a little bit harder now if he angles it correct the right way then he'll be able to hit you so be mindful of that and it's going to be the same way with back air as well he cannot crouch under cross it's kind of like dependent on how the cross is it's not a hundred percent guarantee that you can duck under the cross it's just really all dependent See how like he was able to crouch under at that time. So again, you have to be aware and be mindful that with the cross, you don't really, I don't suggest trying to crouch under it. If anything, you might want to just short hop over it or, or something like that. Um, so, so definitely be mindful of that. Now there's two things. If you're, if you're more an advanced, advanced snake player, like in a, a rushing snake player, most Belmonts are gonna be doing this. They're gonna be doing short hop back airs or forward airs or whatever the case is, and then they'll mix it up with like a cross or so. They'll do like a cross, then have like the, sh the aerials coming in and so on and so forth. So if you are going to wanna to advance, the, the best way in my opinion is just to run shields. That's that's really the best way to just get get through the cross, the aerials, and all that stuff. You could jump if you would like. Uh, the Belmonts aren't really too too dangerous in the air, except for the up air. But you don't really see that too often from them, unless when you're trying to recover high, because there's quite an amount of startup to get to actually get the move out. So I mean, you could jump as well to to jump inside and. Like double jump in and then come in with a fast fall back air on them. So that's one thing. Or again, you can just run shield. Uh, as far as going in with grenades, you can do it too. You can go in with grenades. It is a little bit harder though. Because they got the cross and and the axe in the way and then they're, they're, the range on their aerials can actually hit the grenade too and cause it to explode. So, you're going to want to be mindful of that too. So, as far as anything else goes, that's primarily it. With their recovery, you, I highly recommend using the Nikita. They do have two forms of recovery. They have a tether and they have the up B. And then this is their up B. It doesn't have much much horizontal movement it's more of a ver vertical movement so if you see them kind of down here they're more than likely just gonna up B other than that anything else most Belmonts are just gonna use an aerial to actually tether onto the onto the ledge so when they're tethering there's two types of Belmont players in my opinion there's Belmont players that like to actually just hang for a second and then go up or it'll automatically go up for them or they'll just immediately go up. So what I would do in this case is I normally use the Nikita when I edge guard them and with the Nikita I'll kind of stay around the bottom just in case if they're gonna hang low for a second because if they do that then you'll hit them while they're hanging low and then they'll get stage spiked as long as they don't take it obviously another thing as well if if they're if they're going straight for the ledge then I would just hang around the ledge and then just wait for them to come in up B is really hard to hit them with the Nikita in my opinion I don't think I've ever hit hit them with the Nikita on it because it just goes right through it like nothing but uh as long as they tether it's way much easier to hit them when they're tethering 
also the biggest thing as well to mention is that down smash is your best friend in this game and the reason why it's your best friend is because of the awkward angle for the for knockback so because of that they're gonna have a lot harder time getting back on stage just just like that he probably could have made it with the tether but if anything though it is going to be hard for them to get back on I would normally recommend to edge guard with down smash against them because they can't really do anything if they get hit if you hit them like that's pretty much it so that's that's one thing I, I definitely would highly recommend in this matchup and then if they're throwing cross you could just jump over cross first hit nair and then go into an up tilt so that's one thing to mention i can't do it now because obviously i'm by myself also their neutral special the axe has a great amount of lag behind it so if you see them use the axe or if you're right right inside you, you pretty it's pretty much a free hit you could do whatever you you wish in that in that moment so dash tag you know up till sticky whatever the case is so that's that's one thing to understand as well that axe is definitely their laggiest move so be ready for that now at this point we're gonna go over a little bit on stages so primarily a flat stage is a flat stage is okay for the Belmonts in my opinion because of the amount of control they they could have with the with the projectiles and the cross and all that so that's it's a good stage for them in my opinion um, as far as me and what my team have gathered Kalos is a decent stage for us to fight them on uh, PS2 is also a good one and I think Smashville is decent too things that I would probably not recommend going to is probably Final Destination and Battlefield and the reason why Battlefield can be tough is because of the axe going through all the platforms also with that from the top platform a bel the Belmonts can actually hit you with a up smash and it'll it'll be the sweet spot every time so it'll be the tipper but I think it could go either way to be honest that's just what I would recommend I mean Kalos again Kalos and Pokemon Stadium 2 is a good neutral altogether and I think Smashville is good too in my opinion so if you're more of a rushing snake again I would recommend the smaller the stage the better but uh the way you can just get in and just hit them you know if you're more of a camping camping snake then of course I would say I would say if anything you want to um you want to go for the bigger stages like PS2 and Kalos one thing to mention as well is that Axe also goes through stages so if you're recovering like down here the Axe can still hit you down here see so you want to be careful for that too so it doesn't just stop on the ground unless it unless it hits you that's really the only time now after that really if you're gonna play more of a defensive game again big stages and then just try to camp them out I normally try to throw a grenade at them so in case if they do a cross the grenade can actually just blow up in their face if as long as you the timing is right uh, if they do like a holy water in the middle of the stage I'll just throw a grenade at it because some Belmonts tend to actually want to stay near their near their holy water so I'll just throw the grenade at them it'll explode and potentially hit them as well and at that point if I have like a wall set up here I'll do like a Nikita once in a while I don't do it all the time though just every once in a while that's that's primarily it and then you just come in whenever the time's ready 
get your get your hits in and then try to get the Nikita for the follow-up and again just like just like there just like how I did it there with the tether you kind of want to guess where they're gonna actually where they're actually gonna be at once they actually grab the ledge so that's another thing too and this not only works for the Belmonts obviously this is gonna work for other people that have a tether like Ivy Zora and so on and so forth so I definitely hope that that helps you guys out on that all right and the last thing here before we go is really at this point c4 placement really or like what to actually do against the belmonts and that's really the faster you can get them off stage the better so that way you can actually abuse their bad recovery and have them not come back whether it's you're using your down smash your your nikita you could also use c4 off stage such as such as this that way they actually don't come back or if they actually tether then the c4 will actually catch them that way they actually don't uh don't return so at this point another good thing is um belmonts typically will be in the middle of the stage to try to actually get you with with their their axe or the cross or their aerials so that way they can maximize their full range on you they're not really going to be on the other side of the stage because their projectiles aren't really going to be for the for the whole stage so in this case they're primarily going to be in the middle so you can put a c4 down and then you can use kind of the grenades like on this side of the stage and then at this point try to make the belmont feel uncomfortable and try to make them move back into the side of the state into one of the sides of the stage then once they get there that's when you actually punish them for being on the side of the stage and then getting them off stage for the kill i don't typically actually uh down throw them as well i normally just if i grab them i just back throw them because i want to get them off stage as soon as possible and kind of go from there so i really really hope this helps guys if there's anything else you want to add please leave a comment down below I hope this this layout is a little bit better if you do like it this way let me know if not i can go back to the old way of going over replays and stuff like that on matches but this is generally what we've what we've picked up on and what's going to work out here for us so again thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate it and have a great rest of your week